The Ukraine defied Russia and signed a landmark trade and economic agreement back in June. Now, as talks continue that may see Ukraine become an EU member, we ask expert Amanda Paul from EPC about the issues surrounding the agreement. Amanda, why did the Ukraine sign the association agreement with the EU? Uh, well, Ukraine signed the association agreement with the EU because it's been you know, a long-time uh, geostrategic priority or foreign priority of Ukraine to have increased economic and political ties with the EU and ultimately to one day hopefully be a member of the association agreement and the DCFTA, the trade deal, will help to strengthen Ukraine economically and politically. They'll help push through crucial reforms um, in the economic and political sphere and tighten the relationship between the two partners. So it's very important for the transformation and development of the country, for the modernization of the state. What is next? Now Belarus refused to join Russia in implementing trade restrictions. Could this have a knock-on effect for Russian GDP? Well, as so far as, as I understand, this, this discussion hasn't finished. Next week there's going to be a meeting of the Customs Union where Russia is going to continue to try and pursue this issue. Um, but at the same time, if Belarus continues to refuse and Kazakhstan, it won't really have any impact um, on Russian GDP. There's no reason to think why it should. Are there any other countries who would collaborate with Russia to impose protective measures against Ukrainian goods? I don't think so. I mean, no country other than Russia, as far as I'm aware, wants to put those sort of measures on Ukraine. I mean, it's totally counterproductive. I mean, Russia itself isn't going to gain anything from it by doing it. So there's no reason to think why any other country would join Russia in this, let's say, um, death row scenario uh, in terms of Russia's credibility by following suit. This is hence the reason why, why even its close uh, partners in the, Euro in the customs union, Kazakhstan and Belarus, don't want to do it. They don't want to um, damage their ties with any of these countries or beyond that with the international community who's hardly going to look on that in any positive way. Are there any serious implications for trade? Um, well, if you're talking about the, the trade agreement with the EU, this has been signed. It just has to be implemented, and there's no reason to think um, why this wouldn't happen. Obviously, if, the Rus if you're talking about the Russian position as imposing protective measures on Ukraine, yes, of course, it's going to have some economic implications for Ukraine because they have, um, well, let's say, an, an interesting level of trade with the Russians. But as I said, ultimately, it will damage Russia um, just as much as it would damage Ukraine in the medium uh, to long term, because Ukraine is taking steps um, to, let's say, diversify its economy, to develop its economy and clean up its economy. I mean, Russia's trade with Ukraine, or the, the trade that Ukraine has with Russia, is very much like a, based on a Soviet system um, of trade, which is outdated and corrupt. So Ukraine needs this process of uh, reform and modern modernization to be able to develop other sectors of its economy, which will be beneficial for internally and externally, because Ukraine has huge poten potential um, as an economic driver, both in the region, but also within the state, which hasn't been developed. Could this represent a case model for other decision making in the Euro-Asian Economic Union? Well, I think you have to remember that no country really wants to join the Euro-Asian Economic Union. All the countries that Russia is trying to push into it don't want to be in there at all. So it's having to either blackmail or bully countries into joining. And so far, it hasn't been successful at all, with the exception of Armenia, which is in a very difficult situation with Russia because of its, uh, let's say, long-term security arrangements, economic ties, um, energy ties. So I don't think this is really an issue because no country wants to join the Eurasian Union. Are there any other concerns or issues? I think, well, we all know that the situation is very difficult at the moment between all three partners, between Russia and the EU and Ukraine and Russia. And it's obviously going to be some time before all of this or this relationship uh, returns back to normal because Russia has violated um, international law. It has been, it's created the biggest challenge for European security or even beyond European security by annexing 
um, Crimea, this can't just be forgotten about overnight or in a week or a month or two. This is going to have an impact on the relationship for a long time. But ultimately, the relationship between the EU and Russia, Russia-Ukraine and the EU is important. It's important for regional stability, re- important for regional security. So ultimately, there needs to be answers to the questions of how this is all going to be resolved. But this will take some time. Thank you for your time, Amanda. I'm Alex Isaac for Ducoscopy TV. Goodbye.